Hi everybody! Uh, last week, it was a Saturday, um, I had my last review about the Zuran von AF Archery and I mentioned that uh, in the box that came the first day before there was also the Black Tata and that I wanted to review it today. And um, the weather is not as good as forecasted. Neighbors are quite noisy so um, I hope that will be fine nevertheless. It was worse before an hour ago so um, it's yet much better. Uh, all right it's about the Black Tata from AF Archery. Um, Mac has reviewed it just recently and he was just blown away and um, on his or below his video uh, at the description you find a link where you can order if you are uh, located in the USA uh, you can order this bow for $129 minus 10% rest of the world needs to purchase it as usual and uh, AF Archery has listed this bow for $209 on their uh, website so maybe you get it somehow less uh, I got a little discount because I had already ordered a bow and so uh, it could have used by $30 so not much um, but everything counts and uh, so yeah the bow is here um, as you can see it's black all over except the wood in between but we come to this in a bit um, the Tata, and I have looked that up uh, in Google, um, was the Grim Tatars were uh, at their power or peak was 1441 uh, until 1713. So that was um, the range where they had been on top, and then they have given up the Krim and have been taken over by the Russians. And um, it, it was not difficult at that point of time, obviously. Um, the Tatars were uh, close together with the Turkish, and um, so you see this in the quiver design as well. Um, I have, at least if I can um, trust my search uh, results, so this is the Tata version, the late Tata version of a quiver very similar to um, an Ottoman quiver except that area here so the rest is uh, more or less similar but uh, this special area is different and uh, the top uh, here the bottom is made of wood and uh, so you need some nails to attach the leather to the wood um, yeah so this is my version of a Tata quiver uh, now the specs. The uh, length, knock to knock, unstrung is 54 inches, so it's a mid-size bow. Strung it's 47.75 uh, and uh, we have 7 inches brace height. Um, the bending length is between here and approximately there, so we have 24 inches in total. Um, handle section is relatively long here as well, as we knew this from the Zuran. Uh, they have quite a lot of fading here, but um, it ends exactly here. There's the fade out visible. Um, weight is 330 gram, and the strength of this bow nominal is 35 pounds at 28 inches. And we come to this in a bit how much it is today. Um, uh, max draw, 32 inches, so of course less than the Zuran, but that was uh, insane, 37 inches. <laughs> Not many bows have this draw length. And um, what else? Yeah, um, based on bamboo archery table and the size of the bow, um, it's a recommended arrow weight of 12 grain per pound. If actually, as I'm informed, does not give any hints, so this is safe if you use the 12 grain per pound. Uh, a little less um, won't kill the bow instantly, but um, yeah, you know, the heavier the arrows, the safer the bow is. All right, now, what's my draw weight today? At 17 degrees Celsius, the sunshine now, and 45% humidity. Right. 
first rubber band is 28 inches, the second, the red one, is 29, and this is my Max 1231. Ooh. The rubber band is hardened, not working anymore. Now, yeah. Thirty-two, precisely. So um, we come to twenty-nine. Thirty-four point four, and my max. Mm, maybe this one, because the rubber band has. It's 39.52. Rubber band has moved, so this is rubbish. Okay, but approximately 40 pound. 45% uh, humidity is moderate. It's not really humid, but it's not dry either. Uh, so it's in between. 60% would be good as well. Um, the less uh, humidity we have, the stronger the bow gets. So the, yeah, it's, it's a comfortable drawing weight for me. Um, and if you have a longer drawing weight um, than 31, it's a moderate 40, 42 pound. All right, materials. Um, we have here maple wood inside, bamboo in the limbs, and uh, this here must be some kind of action wood as we have it on the Zuran. Uh, yeah, this is Bearpaw glass, here black. Um, the benefit of the black color is that you uh, sometimes see these uh, white stripes not as good, sometimes you do nevertheless. Um, but what you need to take care of if you have a black bow, that uh, you do not leave it lying in the sun. Yeah, so the limbs get heated easily because of the color and uh, it's important that you do not let it strong lie in the sun. Yeah. Keep it stored in the shadow and mind that uh, it's still in the shadow uh, an hour later. And so you know the world is turning. Um, what else? What do we have else? Maybe woods? Yeah, we have here uh, an arrow pass protection, and I didn't mention an um, arrow pass has 22 millimeters, including the arrow pass protection. This is some kind of plastic. Yeah, it's at least, oops, mm, I fetch it. Um, it's some kind of plastic, it doesn't seem to be leather um, like uh, this wrapping here as well. In German, I would say it's a Schrupfschlauch. Uh, so some kind of um, pipe that you pull over and heat it, and then it's getting uh, closer. And it can be that this plastic here is the whole section all over. Seems to me, because there are no seams and it's not, it's feeling like it's one piece. Which is fine, yeah, no problem and we see how durable this is. Let's shoot. So I show you the handle fitting, at least for my hand. So there's no size S. Yeah, I see here um, this uh, special um, wrapping or pipe ends here and my hand is here. So I would have it this way very nicely fitting. So I like uh, if I do not touch um, the thumb here, but others are used to it. This is how the handle looks like. It's very nice and rounded shaped. Um, arrows. Um, I had now, what did I have? 32? 34? At uh, 28 inches. So this is usually my drawing length. 
I measured around 35, so because, um, well, I thought of 35 because it's the nominal strength here and this is okay today. So it means um, my arrow weight needed to be 200, uh, 420. And 420 is more than these brown ones, they have 408. So this is then 11 so and so grain per pound. Uh, so I would usually take the blue ones. They have 550, no, 443, so it's also close. Um, yeah, a little heavier than uh, the 12 grain per pound, but uh, as you know, this is a cool. And uh, for the speed test, I shoot a few arrows with the light ones so that I can see the potential. All right, first on short distance. So it's a very easy draw. Oops, wrong one. Now I focus on the sound. It's, uh, it's not a very dark sound, a moderate sound, uh, nor dark nor bright. So in between. Vibrations afterwards, yes, there are. But uh, this is just the normal vibration you have. This is not hand shock. And uh, these are the first shots, so. Can be that uh, the bow settles down a bit. So currently the arrows tend to go more to the left. And the spine is 600, so spine is okay. Yeah. Now I shoot the easier ones, the lighter ones. Indeed, they fly better. Much better. Ah, the last one got to the left. I show you. So you see, most of the arrows went here a bit to the left. A few are in the right direction. Um, so uh, if I now shoot um, the heavier ones, I need to focus on these ones. Uh, it showed that it's no good to uh, switch between the arrows back and forth. Um, so I stick to the blue ones now. And later for the speed test, I you take these ones too. Um, the construction you see here uh, has been built by my husband because I said uh, I don't want to have the 3D target that are smaller directly on the ground because then I always need to do this one. And um, so he built me um, a stand uh, where I can place smaller targets on top on a higher position or if I turn it to 90 degree then I have a surface here where I can place something lower uh, or it's a higher 3D target and um, the bottom here can be just used for top because I have here a hair that has um, a pipe outstanding so that you can press it into the ground and uh, this cannot be put on an even surface but can be placed here. So it's uh, relatively cool here and um, yeah, I take this inside, I don't leave it outside, but uh, for now this is just brilliant. So I'm really happy that the sun comes out now. So, now this is around 11 meters.
As Miguel once said, aim small, miss small. So it's more this metallic sound, but it's not that. So although the target is low and I the combination between um, the bow and these arrows are not ideal, but yeah, sometimes it's like it is. Nope. <laughs> that was a target hit. That was in the throat. Too low. That was, I think, a center shot, a kill shot. I show you. Yeah, the last one is the kill shot. So performance of the bow is uh, very nice indeed, so uh, I agree with Mac. Um, the draw is very nice. Yeah. And uh, the vibration that we have here, two, three, four, is a little more than with the Zuran, um, but we have less mass here. Uh, the Zuran is longer, it has another shape, but it has also techno wood in the handle and uh, that is heavier than the maple wood here. And the Zuran is a non-contact bow and here we have string bridges. The materials of string bridges uh, I'm not so sure about. I think it's white epoxy but I do not know. And because of the price of the bow, I don't think that we have here horn or bone or something on it. That arrow got deflected. Apart from weight, um, these two arrows have a minimal different length, but this is due to the point. So the shaft length is exactly the same. Um, the brown one with the 408 grain has um, six, uh, 700 spine and the other with 452 has 600 spine. And uh, yeah, you see the fetching is different, but uh, Basically, they are very much uh, similar. Uh, let's see how they perform on this distance. To the left as well. This, which is funny because I point on the seagull. At least what I can see. Yeah, all to the left. Now to this one again. To the right, not the seagull itself, but uh, the wood that it's sitting on. Closer. Close to the other one. Seems I got adapted to the blue ones. 
Practice is everything. So, first of all. The light ones. Hundred fifty nine, hundred sixty one, hundred fifty nine, and now the heaviest. 552 grain hundred fifty three hundred forty nine Hundred fifty-three. Uh, so indeed, not much difference. Yeah, uh, similar, but um, yet a shot a group. <laughs> Show you. So maybe this legal is a tricky target. Huh? That's okay. I need to say, shooting with an easy bow is very relaxing. Um, so you can focus on your form, try to get it right, um, practice difficult things. Yeah? So some things are more difficult to others than for you and vice versa. Um, if you have settled down the knocking point, that's good. Maybe this is a bit too high. Um, I don't have the knocking point not yet set, as you can see. Not so sure if this is the right height or not. Could be probably, but I can also make a difference with my thumb. Uh, see? The speed test, uh, I had nice grouping, but uh, with a seagull, maybe something in my head doesn't want to shoot it. <laughs> I was looking at me. Mm -hmm. Ha! Take that, seagull. And in the tail. It's so cool shooting in the sun, in the garden, <coughs> and moderate climate. No freezing. Wow, this is springtime. The only disadvantage is that neighbors uh, feel inspired to do some kind of working, noisy working. Ha! I make a move. No. Nah. Moved again. <laughs> Another one. No, that was off. So make three of six. Come on. I show you. <laughs> So I get to use or get used to this uh, combination bow and arrows. Uh, you can see two in the target uh, in, in the kill zone here. Uh, one at the foot that is also counting. Uh, that one is at um, the wing that's also counting, and the other ones not. Resume. What do I think of my Black Tata bow by AF Archery? It's a very nice and very pleasant shooter. Um, what I did not do uh, instantly out of the box was uh, shooting groups, but uh, this is um, not my speciality. Yeah, so I'm usually 
very happy if I shoot a group. So this is not uh, a marker for anything. Yeah. So, and at least um, with every arrow, you can have different results. Um, my high aim is that I can shoot every bow with every arrow and hit where I want. <laughs> <coughs> so maybe this is possible, maybe not. Uh, at least it means that um, this could be a lifetime task. Um, yeah, but back to the bow. Uh, the performance is very nice. So the shooting uh, is very nice too. The sound is moderate. It's not dark and it's not light. So it's just something in between, not annoying at all, doesn't need silencers and um, the draw is very smooth. So up to here, here it gets a little more stiff, but then we reach nearly the 32 uh, max draw and um, yeah, this, this is fine, totally. And uh, what I like is, oh, I didn't say something about the string. I think it's a fast flight string. It looks the same as uh, for the Zuran. I think they have just a big role where they take this, make the string off. And um, yeah, the speed uh, is moderate. Um, it's not too fast, but not a slow shooter either. Um, I need to practice more with a Tata shape. Um, but this is also a phenomenon that I have seen with other bows. So again, nothing special for this bow. Um, the arrow pass protection after it was uh, 30, 60 shots is um, a bit worn out. So maybe you can see it here. Uh, no wonder this is plastic. Yeah, And um, in case this is not working anymore because it's uh, cut down to the wood, uh, I will just replace it here. It's glued in. Not sure if this is hot glue, uh, but I'm, I think I can remove it and replace it with ray skin. But I will only do this if necessary. Uh, next one, the 35 pound, I didn't reach today, um, at least at 28, but this is no problem. Yeah. Um, this is the range of 35 pound. So if you order a bow that is not specially made for you, uh, but production uh, or mass production like this one, and there is always a range. You, know, you, you don't have all bows at 35, at 28 inches. And uh, it also depends who measures where, under which circumstances. And the scale is different and so on. So expect uh, a slightly deviation, can be a little less, can be a little more, approximately plus minus two. And uh, we are in this range. And if you uh, want to practice your form, a lighter bow will always do you good. Yeah, so this is always better. A heavier bow, uh, you need to practice a lot. And if you do not practice regularly and have a heavy bow, you will be quite unpleased if you want to go on a, this is called rover in English, or we say on a parkour and want to shoot a few hours, can be a handicap if the bow is too heavy. Um, with a lighter bow, you will have fun to the end. Yeah. And if the arrows match the bow, then this is a no-brainer. Um, what else to say? We have uh, a little vibration. If I pull here, one, two, three, four, gone. And uh, so it's a little more. I already mentioned it. This is because of the relatively light wood in the handle. Um, the bow is light, so 306, uh, 330 gram, this is, yeah, <laughs> nothing. Um, and what else? Since it's mass production, the bow is beautiful nevertheless. Yeah? So it's made with care. 
um, you see the reflections here in the sun. It's flawless. Uh, nothing to complain about. Of course, um, they have made sure that uh, materials are not over expensive, and uh, but the performance is good nevertheless. Um, what else? <coughs> Stringing was very easy. Yeah, so I used the step through method um, with the upper section because I'm quite stiff and I don't get down to that easily. Uh, so I need to have it on the open on the upper side. Uh, but this is easy with this one. What else? Um, the width and so on is so it's common. Yeah, no no special thing. Um, the arrow pass is narrow but not is, is extremely narrow but it's not wide either. So it's something in between. The handle section reminds me on the Turkish bow which is normal for Tata. Uh, since these tribes have, have been quite working close together uh, for a time. And um, yeah, shape is always beautiful. The Tata uh, shape is always very pleasing. Um, the tips are... I don't think that there's a special Tata design tip or tip design. Um, yeah, this is just what AF has thought of that would look good. Uh, there is not much mass here in the end, which is fine. And um, yeah, overall it's very good looking. Yeah, so an easy bow, um, not uh, cost, uh, uh, very costly. Um, of course, if you're located in the USA, you have an uh, extreme benefit here. Um, rest of the world does not have it. To, yeah, I can't tell you why that is, but uh, it is like this. And um, I think it's a very nice shooter and I will uh, practice a little more. In case I get a nice grouping, I will add the picture in the end <laughs> as evidence. Finally, it works. And um, yeah, thank you very much, Shan Shan for the communication and AF Archery for building these bows. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, have fun practice archery. Uh, it's getting spring. Yeah, you can go out again and uh, let some, some arrows fly. Uh, have a good start into the week and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Fingers pressed for our friends in Ukraine. Bye bye. <laughs> First shot hit kill zone. Second could be kill zone too. But seagull moved. Show you. First one got really nice into the uh, kill zone. The second is touching the kill zone, it's also counting. And the last one, yeah, it's too low. <laughs>